Welcome to Rags to Riches. In this video, I will show you the fastest way to go from zero dollars to becoming the king of Los Santos and not even knowing what to spend all your money on. No clickbait, no lies, let's get you rich. First things first, we need to create our character that's gonna be going on this adventure with us. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you know exactly who we're gonna make. Where is he? Come on, where is he? There he is, Juan. We are making Juan, son of Juan, the level Juan. There you go, Juan. You look beautiful, mate. That's that's a great outfit right there. All right, let's go. Now, first thing we're going to do is go over to this stash house. This is because we need to actually be able to afford guns for what we're going to do next. All right, once we get in here, completing this stash house will give us about $30,000, which is actually awesome. All righty, that goes down. Oh, this auto aim is, is bugging me. All right, we're looking for a yellow sticky note. Here it is. All right, 73, 27, 38. There we go, we're in. Grab this bad boy, let's get out of here. So like I said, this gives us $30,000, which definitely helps as a level one. These also reset every single day, so we can actually do these every single day, which will help us out a lot. All right, see you, buddy. I'll be taking this bike. All right, 31 grand. Next thing we're gonna do is G's stash up here. All right, we can also do these every single day as well. This is gonna give us about $18,000. We're looking for a a box. A box with some tape on it. Should be around here somewhere. We'll hear bells when we're near it as well. Alright, here's the box. Found it. In between two coffins. Alright, $18,000. Ammo and snacks as well. So we got 54 grand. Plus 8 grand in the bank. We'll just pick up an action figure as well. So we got about 58 grand. This will be enough to get us some weapons. And then we can move on to step 2. Let's go to ammunition. Alrighty, when I'm a low level, I always go for the service carbine. Pretty stock standard rifle. That's going to help us out a lot. So we'll get the extended clip, grip, and we'll get full ammo. And then we will want to go, where is it? The micro SMG. We're not even level 5, bro. Okay. Um, let's go for a backup option over here. We go for the machine pistol. This is kind of just a budget, budget version. Pretty similar, to be honest. We'll put extended clip on it as well. Get full ammo. And then we're on to the next step. So what we're going to do is the Drug Wars First Dose Missions. To start these up, go up to the letter R that's in the middle of the map up here. So your first time through these missions, you're going to get an extra $50,000 after every single mission. Once you complete the final mission, you're going to get $250,000 bonus. So all up, we're going to get somewhere around $550,000 just for completing these six missions. That's awesome. Mission passed. Okay, only $15,000. I know that doesn't sound that good, but just wait and see what happens next. All right, loading back in. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. $50,000. Next thing we're going to want to do is call Dax now that we have him as a contact and request work. I'll explain why once we're in the mission. These Dax missions are relatively easy to complete, especially as a low level, and they're going to pay us $50,000 for every single one. The only problem is... They're on a 48 minute cooldown, so you can only do these once about every hour. That way, we may as well start doing them now, instead of waiting till the end of the story to start doing them, because this way, we can do another one once we finish the story, because it'll be off cooldown. Yeah, with this Rags and Riches series, I'm really trying to optimize how quickly I can actually make money and make the most of our time. So once we leave this area, there we go, $50,000, we're already up to $130,000 and we still have five missions to go. So what we need to do is head back to the freak shop now. The fastest way to do this is actually just to set it as your spawn location and change lobbies. And we're going to start up mission two, designated driver, let's do it. And I'm going to finish these six missions and I'll talk to you guys at the end of the sixth mission. All right, here we are, mission six. There we go, we've got all five, but our job's not done, we are going to steal the Brocade 6x6. Now, what's awesome about this is once you steal this, you can put an acid lab in the back of it. So not only are we going to have a cool vehicle, we're going to have our first business. If we can get it out of here, that is. Which, uh, kind of, kind of a tough spot to get it out of, huh? Alright, off we go. Off to the freak shop. Please, pop up. There we go. Mission passed. How much we get for the final mission? Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to get the $250,000 bonus now, though. Let's deposit all our money. So what are we at? $616,000. That's a, that's pretty good. Let's head inside the actual freak shop here. We're going to go talk to Mutt. 
All right, steal the lab equipment from a nearby warehouse to unlock the acid lab. Let's go do this. Let's go to one of these warehouses on our map with that yellow logo, and uh, we'll get this bad boy set up. All right, all three pallets are on. Grab this truck. Let's get out of here. Setup complete. Now, we can't actually get it yet. As you can see here, we're going to need $750,000 in order to actually install this. So, we need a quick way to make about $140,000. Luckily, there is a really easy way to do this, even as a level 1. What we're going to do next is the 10 Junk Skydives. You can actually do these every single day. So, every single day, there's going to be 10 of these around the map. Completing all 10 of them with a gold medal is going to give you $150,000 total every single day. You can do that every day. It's going to take you about, I don't know, 45 minutes to do all 10. And as a new player, that's really good money. There we go. $100,000. We have about 150 k cash. That'll be more than enough to get this acid lab set up. Let's go back to the freak shop and let's set it up. So there you have it. This acid lab is ours once it spawns in here. There we go, and that's the end of episode one. Now, I forgot to do this before, but new players, you probably should be spinning the wheel every single day as well. There's a chance you can win $50,000 or $40,000 from it, or you could just straight up win a car, which would be absolutely huge starting out your journey. What are we going to get? Now that we have the acid lab set up, there's three different ways for us to resupply it. The first is what I'm doing on screen now by resupplying them yourselves. This will put you in a mission where you have to go out, steal the supplies, then bring them back to the acid lab. But that's not very effective because you'll actually have to do that about four times to fully resupply the business. The other way is you can walk up to Mutt and pay $60,000 for supplies, or you can call him and do the same thing. That's normally very, very effective, but because we're just starting out in GTA Online, we don't have that much money, so I'd prefer not to do that. So what we're actually going to do is go to a stash house and do it. You'll remember last episode, I told you that this will make you $30,000 each day. However, now that we have a business, instead of giving us $30,000, it's actually going to fully resupply one of our businesses. And because we only have one, that means whenever we do a stash house, it will fully resupply our acid lab, essentially saving us $60,000. This is why we got the acid lab first, because it's super easy to resupply with these stash houses and basically is going to make us free money as a low level player. So from this point on, I want you to do your stash house every single day to resupply your acid lab. And then we're going to wait for this to fill up and we'll sell this at the end of the episode. In this episode, we're going to make almost $2 million. And the first way we're going to do this is through treasure hunts. There's three different treasure hunts that we're going to do today, and each of them is going to give us between $250,000 to $350,000. And none of them should really take longer than an hour and a half. So let's get the first one underway. The first thing I did was wait until this email popped up in my inbox. This will normally happen a couple hours into your GTA Online career. Once this pops up, it's going to show you a photo of where this treasure hunt clue is. Then look on your map and there'll be a big yellow circle. Unfortunately, that circle is kind of bugged and often doesn't accurately show where the clue actually is. However, once you're up to this step, I'll leave a link at the top of the description that will show you all 20 possible spawn locations for this clue. My first clue is pretty simple, just over here on this island. And you'll be looking for this letter here that says, Treasure tore our family apart. It ain't here no more. I moved it. You fuckers will never find it. From there, three little yellow circles will spawn on your map. And these will be the same for everyone. So I'll show you how to get them. For the first clue closest to the left side of the map, you just have to go inside this cave here and you'll see this dead body. For the clue in Sandy Shores, just walk into this abandoned hut and you'll find a shovel in the sand. And for the clue closest to the top of the map, just next to this tree on the side of the road will be an empty revolver case.
Once you have all three clues, a yellow chest will spawn on your map. Head over there, open the chest, and you'll unlock the double action revolver from Red Dead Redemption 2. The next step is where things get pretty spicy. Now that you have the double action revolver, make sure your social club is linked to your account. It's a very simple process to connect your Rockstar Social Club account to your account. All you need to do, if you haven't done it already, is head over to the Rockstar Social Club website, and it's pretty straightforward. Once that's set up, all you need to do is get 50 headshots with the double action revolver, and you'll unlock $250,000. These headshots should be very, very simple to do because you can actually get headshots on anyone, whether it's an NPC driving a car or walking down the side of a road, whether it's another player, a cop, whoever. The easiest way to do it is call the cops or just get the cops on you, go onto a rooftop where they can't really get you easily and just continue to peek and head glitch the cops. Even if this does take you a really long time, it's still worth it because there's not really another way to make any better money at this level. After the first treasure hunt was down and we finally had a bit of money in the bank account, it's time to get ourselves our first car. But no, not just for the sake of having a car, even though that's going to be nice, this vehicle is actually going to make us hundreds of thousands of dollars as well. But before we buy this car, I want you to come over to this garage at the top of the city and complete Howl's Time Trial. Unfortunately, this is only available on PS5 and Xbox Series X. Once you complete this time trial, what it's going to do is it will allow us to upgrade an HSW vehicle to its HSW version of that vehicle for free. If you're unaware, How's Special Works, or HSW, is a special series of cars that are much faster than the existing cars in the game. This is incredibly useful for us because this will allow us to complete HSW time trials every single week. And if we complete them, we get $250,000 just for completing a simple time trial. So once you go to Howe's garage and complete his first time trial, what I want you to do is buy yourself a garage to store a vehicle in. At this stage, we only need one vehicle, so just buy quite literally the cheapest property in the game, which is the two-car garage on Popular Street. This will either be free for you or just $25,000. From there, what I want you to do is go into Legendary Motorsport and buy the vehicle called the Bravado Banshee. This is based off a Dodge Viper, but why am I telling you to buy this vehicle in particular? There's a bunch of vehicles that we can make into HSW vehicles. Why this one? The Banshee is not only the cheapest one, but it also has the third highest top speed in the entire game. So now that we've completed Howe's special time trial, we can buy the Banshee for just over $100,000, take it into the LS car meet, and upgrade it to an HSW vehicle for free. First though, you will have to head over to Mimi in the LS car meet and buy a membership for $50,000, but believe me, this is still more than worth it. Let me try and put in perspective how much money we're actually saving with this. There are only three HSW vehicles that have a higher top speed than the Banshee. Those are the Vigero ZX, which is normally $1.947 million, the Sterling GT, which is normally $975,000, and the S95, which is normally $1.995 million. The Banshee is fourth, and it's only $105,000. Plus, now that we have the free House Special Works upgrade for completing his time trial, we are now saving 1.84 million dollars that it would normally cost to upgrade the Banshee to the HSW Banshee. The amount of money we're saving here is absolutely insane. So now that you have your HSW Banshee, it may also be worthwhile, if you have the extra money for it, to not only make use of that free upgrade, but also possibly add a couple more acceleration upgrades as well. These can be things like transmission upgrades, turbo tuning, and more. But as long as you have about eight bars of acceleration, like you can see here, you should be able to complete these house special works time trials somewhat comfortably. So let's go and do that. First thing we're going to do is look to see where the HSW time trial is on your map. Head over there and give it a go. My tip for this, first tip, what you're going to want to do is actually just place a waypoint on the final destination. That way you know the fastest route to go and you don't spend time going the wrong way. From there, if you know you're not going to complete this time trial fast enough, hold triangle or Y on Xbox to restart the time trial. The reason for that is if you complete the time trial in a time that is not 
quick enough, you won't have the ability to fast travel back to the start of that time trial. And in order to get the $250,000 for doing this once per week, we do need to complete the time trial below the time that's set for us. So there's no point in completing it too slow. Keep in mind this might take you a while. Some players might be able to complete it first go, for others it might even take you an hour. Either way is completely okay guys. It's worth taking the time to try and do this because $250,000, even if it does take you an hour, is still incredible for making money as a low level player. Once you've completed your house special works time trial, congratulations first of all, but not only are you able to complete this time trial, you can also complete the normal weekly time trial with your banshee as well. This one isn't going to give us 250k, but it will give us $100,000, which is again, awesome money. So just for doing these two time trials, we've made $350,000 and we're well on our way to becoming a millionaire. Righto, let's get back to some treasure hunts. Like I said, we've still got two more to go in this video. The next treasure hunt we're going to do is the bounty hunting one from Maud Eccles. In order to start this treasure hunt up, head up to this M on your map. Once you're here, you're going to get a text from Maud. She's going to tell you that shortly she'll send you some bounty hunting targets that you can track down and either kill or return to her for money. Once you get this email, make sure you're set up as a VIP or CEO through your interaction menu. In order to do that, hold down the touchpad, go down to secure surf and set yourself up as a VIP or a CEO. If you don't do this, occasionally the game can bug out and Maud won't actually send you these targets. Once Maud sends you a target, your job is pretty simple. You're going to get a photo to see what they look like. From there, head over to the big yellow circle on the map and that person is going to be somewhere in that circle. You then have two choices. You can either kill them and get $5,000 or return them all the way back to Maud and get $10,000. In my opinion, if the target is pretty close to where Maud is, punch the target a few times and then take them back to Maud. If they're on the complete other side of the map though, it's not worth wasting your time. Just kill them, get the $5,000 and wait for the next target. Once you've done this five times, just like the last treasure hunt we did, you're going to get the location of a chest. Go over to that chest and instead of getting a double action revolver, this time you're going to get a stone hatchet. And this thing is really cool. When you kill someone with this stone hatchet, it's going to activate a rampage ability, which is somewhat like Trevor's ability from single player. It's going to give you a lot more health. In order to get the money for this treasure hunt, all you need to do is kill 20 people with this hatchet. So instead of getting 50 headshots with the revolver like we did before, you just need 20 kills. And again, this could be on anyone, a cop, a civilian, a player, literally anyone. And once you do that, you're going to get another $250,000 on top of the money that you got for killing the bounty targets. After this, complete your daily skydives again, just like we did in episode one. These will be on the map with the little parachute, like you can see here. Go around the map, complete 10 of these like I did with gold medals on every single one, and you're gonna get $150,000 total. It was at this point where I called it for the day, jumped off and came back to the game after the next weekly reset. And it was time for me to complete the third treasure hunt. This treasure hunt will be for the Navy Revolver and it's actually very similar to the double action revolver treasure hunt we did before. First thing I want you to do is come up to this building here and you'll see this text on the side of the wall that says, can you find me? The location is right here on the map. Now, this is the first one of five clues that we'll be doing for this treasure hunt. So let's go to the other ones. The second clue you'll be looking for is this hand or this arm here. Now, this one is right north of the Sandy Shores airfield right here on the map. For clue number three, we'll be heading a bit further north again right here on your map. Walk up to the side of this barn and you're going to want to look at this axe in the side of the wall. The fourth one is right at the top of the map in Polito Bay. Go over and inspect this bloody handprint that's on this door. The location is right here on the map. Now the fifth and final clue will be a van. 
However, it doesn't spawn in one set location. There's actually five different spots that it can spawn. This map here shows all of the possible spawn locations. You'll see there's four red skulls that have a black outline. Those are the four we've already got. The red skulls that have a yellow outline though are the five possible spawn locations for this van. Now I'll leave a link in the description below leaving a link to this map where you can actually zoom in and see the exact precise location of this van spawn. So that should help you out a lot. After you have all five clues, you'll get a text from an unknown number. Once you get this text, you need to go into Blaine County between the hours of 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. in game. You'll need to be on foot and the easiest location to do this is actually just the Sandy Shores airfield. Just walk out right in the middle like this. I would also recommend standing on top of your car like I do here. Once you're here between the hours of 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. in game, the slasher is actually going to spawn and try and kill you. You have to kill him, which is pretty easy if you're on an object that he can't get on top of. Then you'll have unlocked the Navy Revolver, along with $50,000 for your troubles. From there, we just have to do the exact same thing that we did with the Double Action Revolver. Get 50 headshots. And just like the Double Action Revolver Treasure Hunt, we're going to get another $250,000. So all the treasure hunts are down, we still have some ways to make money. Like I said, I waited until the weekly reset, which is Thursday mornings. So that means I could do my HSW and my normal time trials again. So I completed both of those for another $350,000. And because it was a new day as well, I completed 10 more skydives for another $150,000. I then completed another stash house to stock up my acid lab and finished off the episode by completing an acid lab sale mission. So in order to do this, head into your acid lab, either go into the free shop, take it out of the free shop and then hop in the back or just request your acid lab to you through the interaction menu by going into services acid lab request acid lab from there walk to the back of your acid lab to where the acid is stored and you'll be able to sell all of the product you have for me because i recorded this episode across two days my acid lab was completely full if you want to sell the acid lab there's two ways to do it the first is in an invite only session which i would recommend for new players and the second way is to do it in a highly populated public session. This is very, very risky because other players will try and blow up your product. But if you can successfully do it, you're going to get a bonus for every single player that's in that lobby. For every player that's in your lobby, you're going to get 2.5% more money when you complete that sale mission. However, that's going to cap out at 20 players. So potentially, if you did this in a 20 player lobby, you could earn 50% more money. However, I don't recommend that for new players because you are actually very likely to get your product destroyed and earn nothing. Anyway, I completed my sale mission and we finished the video with just under $1.7 million. Not bad for a low level player. In episode three, we'll be saving up the last $500,000 to buy the Kasatka submarine and start the Kayaparico heist. Today, we're gonna be completing the last dose story missions. And today, we're gonna be making a lot of money with the part two missions. To start these up, once you've finished the first dose set, head over to Dax again at the free shop and start these up. We're gonna do five missions today. These five missions are gonna get us a bit of money, but our first time through these missions, every single one would give us a bonus $100,000, which means just for completing these five with our first time bonuses, we're gonna get half a million dollars. Once we do this, we'll have enough money to buy the Kasatka submarine. And that's going to let us start up a heist that will make us one and a half million dollars every single time we do it. I'm not going to bore you with the gameplay. I'm going to run through these last dose missions and I'll talk to you at the end of the fifth mission. There we go. Mission four down. That, that was a weird one, man. $21,000 plus we're going to get the 100k. And then we should actually almost have enough for the Kasatka submarine, which is $2.2 million. All right. How much money do we have if we deposit all of this? 2.2? We are, oh, we're like $829 away. All right, well, we may as well do this final mission now because we're going to get another 100K and a free supercar. Oh, we got SWAT coming in now. All right, let's, uh, let's try and get out of here. That's the last dose done and dusted. All right, we've got enough money for the cassette cut. We're at the top of Mount Chiliad. I think there's only one real way off this mountain, isn't there? Let's do it.
as we're driving over here, what we're doing is we're picking up Dr. Friedlander's car. So if you complete all of the first and last dose missions as a host in the correct order, you're going to unlock this car for free. This is the Ocelot Virtue. And this thing is absolutely sick. It's an electric hypercar. So uh, the top speed's not incredibly fast, but the acceleration is very, very, very quick. Not gonna lie, this might replace my Banshee as my daily driver. This thing is so cool, man. All right, let's buy the submarine. Here we are, Kasatka 2.2. In order to purchase the Kasaka, meet Miguel Madrazo, the music locker. Okay, we need to head over to the music locker and uh, get a briefing from Miguel Madrazo. This is a long cutscene, so I won't bore you with it. And now, we can buy our own submarine. Uh, no, we don't quite have the money right now for all of these upgrades. But uh, there we go. We've got a submarine mission success. In today's episode, we'll be completing our first Cayo Perico heist. And I'll be guiding you through it step by step from scope out all the way to completion while also keeping in mind that at this point, you probably won't have a helicopter yet. So we'll fix that issue in episode five. But today, we'll be starting off this episode by actually going and getting a helicopter that's just gonna spawn on the map. In the Cayo Perico heist, after every single setup mission, you're gonna have to go back to your Kasatka submarine, which is going to be in the water. So instead of requesting a dinghy boat all the time, which we will do sometimes, but I also want you to be aware of all of the helicopter spawns on the map. So I'm going to put them all on your screen now. So keep these locations in mind whenever you're doing these setups. With that out of the way, we're going to go over to our Kasatka, watch the starting cutscene, and I'll talk to you guys on Cayo Perico. Once you finish all these cutscenes, we, uh, we just need to get past this guard here. Now, if you walk right past me, he's going to tell you to turn around. So we kind of need to sneak around him or we can wait for him to actually walk forward, which happens every so often. And then we can just walk behind him and walk out the gate. Okay, now that we're out, just, uh, just follow this route that I'm going to show you here. So we're going to come up here to the right. Now we're going to have this first guard tower up there. We're going to run all the way and go through this little door. All right, we're through. So we're going to go to the right here because there's a camera watching that way. And what we can do, check that there's no car coming and there's no car you can see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this ATV, back it up and drive right across here, dodging that camera. Now make sure that the guard in the guard tower on the right isn't looking this way as well, which he isn't right now. So we're going to gun it across here. All right, we're good. First thing we need to do is get to the compound of El Rubio. After your first completion, you'll just need to get to the uh, communications tower up there, but we have to get to the actual compound and scope it out on our first time. Right here, okay. So there's the compound. Now we're gonna turn around and go back up to that communications tower, just take the same route, dodging that guard that's in the tower there. All right, once we're here, we'll go in this gate and we're looking for the communications signal box thing. Sometimes it can spawn on the ground, but it hasn't this time, so we'll climb up. And it can spawn on any of the levels of this tower. Could be on the first level, could be on the top level. So just keep an eye out. You'll hear it as well. And it's right here on the first level. Easy. All right, we'll open this. And then we just need to do a little bit of algebra. So I hope you didn't skip your math class today, because... All right, so that's times one, times two, and times five. So we need a times times 10 sorry times 10 times 1 and then times 2 gets us 59 easy okay once you finish that cutscene what i actually want you to do is go through all of the cameras and scroll all the way from right to left or left to right here we are in the basement though we need to go all the way to the left because the first time we do this heist we're gonna get the madrazo files there they are all right we scoped out the primary target now what I would recommend doing is just going left to right, like I said, through all of these cameras. You're going to see a lot of secondary loot that we won't actually be able to get as a solo player because you need two key cards to enter these rooms, so you need at least two players. That's fine, this heist is actually more profitable as a solo player anyway, so don't worry about it. And the reason I want you to do this is not actually to scope out these secondary targets, but once you get outside, it's going to scope different entry points into the compound for you. So as you can see here with the north gate, we scroll all the way to the left and we just scope out an entry point there. We'll go north wall, go all the way to the right, and there's another compound entry point. So basically just do that. You'll only have to do this once and then you will remember all of these points. 
After that, Pavel's gonna tell you to go to the North Dock, which is kind of annoying because we won't actually be using the North Dock for the way that we're gonna do the Kayabriga heist today. But anyway, just go there, do what he tells you to do. And then what I want you to do after that is actually steal one of these dinghies here. Once you've got the dinghy, I want you to drive it all the way around here, where I'm placing this waypoint, right out front of the compound in the water here. This is because we're going to scope out the drainage tunnel. Now, you don't actually scope this out by taking a photo of it. You do it by swimming underwater where the drainage tunnel is. So, follow what I do here and you'll scope it out. Then I want you to drive all the way around to the main dock over here. Take a photo of this entrance, make sure that it pops up as you scoping out the main dock. This is actually where we're going to enter for the Kaya Perico heist. So you need to take a photo of it in order to actually enter here. Next, I want you to head back to the airstrip back at the top of the map. Go into this building here, this hangar sort of thing. I guess it's a hangar, right? And once we're in here, we want to take a photo of all of this secondary loot. So we've got some green stuff there and some cash. So we'll take a photo of that. You do have to take a photo of each individual item as well. It won't just take a photo of both of them. Send both of those to Pavel. Then we're going to jump up on this box, jump up here. This is where we can scope out some more stuff. So we got a bit more cash and coke. So that's the best. Coke is going to pay the most. Beautiful. So in terms of how much they're going to pay you for loot that you can get solo, coke is going to be the best. Then it's going to be the green stuff. And then cash pays the least. I've done a complete breakdown where I broke down the profits for every single one as well, including gold and artwork. So check that out. That's a video for a separate occasion. This is just our first time through. After you've scoped those two out, we're going to run over here. That's because more secondary loot can spawn in this shack here. We didn't get any. That's okay. We've still got coke, some green stuff, and some cash we can grab over there. Once that's done, you're going to have to take a photo of the control tower as well. So do that, then head back to the pilot and head back to the city. Next, I'll be showing you which setups you should do, and I'll give you a couple little tips for each one. So let's start with the approach vehicle. We're going to be doing the long fin. As you can see here, I've got a helicopter on the front of my submarine. That's because I stole it from the airport. You can try and make these helicopters last as long as possible by, like I did here, landing it on the submarine. For the long fin setup, we have to go to a police station, and then Pavel is going to tell us to go get a truck that can tow the boat to where we need to get it to. These trucks are going to be on your map. Now, there's going to be one location where there's two trucks and another location where there's one truck. At the location where only one truck spawns, that's going to be heavily guarded by lots of enemies. That's because it's actually a phantom wedge. It's got like a massive ramp on the front of it. For this setup though, we don't actually really need to use that. I would recommend just going the safer option and stealing one of the two trucks that spawn close to each other. Once that's done, go to the police station, back this truck in there, take the long fin, and once you have the long fin out of the police station, what I actually want you to do is hop out of your truck and blow yourself up. The reason for that is this is the quickest way to lose the cops, so that'll save you time trying to drive this massive slow truck towing a boat and trying to lose the cops that way. Just blow yourself up and then hop right back in and drive to the destination. Now, as you can see here, once I finished this, I had no helicopters anywhere near me. So what I did was I requested my Kasatka again. That way it's going to spawn very close to me. Then I go back into my services menu and request a dinghy. That's going to spawn a dinghy right next to me. That way I don't need to try and steal a helicopter or a boat. I can just spawn the dinghy right next to me in the water and drive over there. Next setup we're going to do is safe codes. Now this one's pretty straightforward again. We just need to go into the casino, take out this guy and steal the codes. Right, now that he's down, we'll take his safe codes and get the hell out of here. Do the same thing again. Either steal a helicopter or request a dinghy and go back to the submarine. Next setup is fingerprint cloner. This one, again, pretty simple. You're just going to have to go to this warehouse. There's going to be four guys inside of here. It shouldn't be too hard to take out. Just take cover and take them out slowly if you need to. 
gonna hack this computer then we need to go over to the archive which is actually gonna be completely unguarded so we go in here steal the fingerprint cloner and head back to the submarine again next setup we're gonna do is cutting torch we're not gonna do demolition charges because they're very loud whereas the cutting torch is completely silent if you don't have the option to do the cutting torch it's because you didn't scope out the drainage channel by the way so make sure you go scope out the drainage channel like we did earlier in the video and then you can do this setup instead of the demolition charges this one's pretty easy it's just going to take us to a construction site there's a couple ways we can do it we can either go in guns blazing and kill all of these guys or we can look for a construction hat that's going to be around here somewhere once you put on this hard hat the enemies aren't going to actually care that you're there they're going to think you're just an employee working at the construction site so you can go around look at all of the toolboxes until you find the one with the drill in it this is the one here pick it up and then take it back to the submarine next we're going to choose a weapon loadout i normally recommend going aggressor because the assault shotgun is amazing this one's technically personal preference whatever you like most go with that but i would recommend aggressor now here we've got a really good setup it's one where we have to go to one of the buildings in the city that's the best option if you don't get this setup and it tells you to go to merryweather hq what i would actually recommend doing is setting your spawn location to your Kasatka and just finding a new lobby the reason for that is this setup we're doing here should really only take you a couple minutes whereas the merryweather hq one is gonna make you follow a really slow helicopter all the way across the map and that setup can take like 10 minutes it's a massive waste of time instead just keep refreshing it by finding a new lobby and starting the setup again until it tells you to go to a building that's in the city once we're here preferably you would do this stealthy but we had to kill the guys out front of the building so everyone knows we're here just take it slow it's it's fine you've got unlimited lives just take out all the guys in here hack the computer and steal the weapons from the safe deliver the weapons back to the submarine and then we're ready to actually do the finale we're almost done i would not recommend doing any of the disruption preps they take a while to actually complete and we won't actually need them if we do this stealthy don't worry i'll show you how to do this completely perfectly stealthily so you're never going to alert any guards okay let's start up this finale I'll pause it here so you can see everything that we'll be doing. Approach vehicle is going to be long fin, infiltration point is main dock, compound entry, drainage tunnel, escape point does not matter at all, I just put it on airstrip. It doesn't actually matter where you escape, you can escape anywhere you like. Time of day, I put it as day just because that's probably easiest to see everything clearly. And then weapon loadout, we chose aggressor and make sure you choose the option to put a suppressor on it as well, like you can see here. Once that's done, we're good to go, so let's go. For this heist, I'm going to do absolutely no jump cuts. I'm going to just walk you through everything we're going to be doing. That way, it should be very, very easy for you to understand. So I'm just going to let this heist play out and explain my decisions along the way. First thing we're going to do is we're going to head left because we started at the main dock. We're going to go to the airstrip first and collect all of the secondary loot. Now, we can't just take as much loot as we'd like. We do have a loot bag that has a limit. And I'll explain that once we're inside. But first, we'll park the long fin here because we're going to come back to it. So we want to just put it right up against the shore there. Then first thing we're going to do is head to that back hangar here. And we're going to grab all of the loot. So what we're going to do, we've got suppressors on. We're going to take out this guy. Easy done. Now, we want to make sure we take him out as far left as possible because there is going to be a truck that comes through over near that entrance there and it will spot that body if you kill him too close to where that truck is all right we're inside first thing we're going to do is grab the coke that's going to fill up half of our bag grab this forklift going to grab this crate And then we're going to put it right over here so we can jump on top of it. Make sure you don't block the door at the bottom here to this secondary loot because we're going to need that door as well. We're going to jump up here. Oh, okay, we're going to jump down. I, I did not even know you could slide through there. That is wild. All right, we're going to jump up here. Jump on top of the crate. Over we go. All right. This is why we chose the cutting torch, because it's completely silent. As you can see there. All right, we're in. Easy. So we're going to grab the coke first. Let's fill our bag. Yep. 
beautiful. And then the green stuff is going to give us the second most amount of money. So we'll take that next. Jump over here. Jump back down. In we go. Oh, we got to cut it. That's right. Okay, grab the green on the left here. Fill this bad boy up. Now, the green stuff is going to take up one third of the bag space. So we've got a little bit left over. So we'll fill that up with cash. Normally, one full stack of cash will take up a quarter of the bag or 25%. So we won't have room for all of this, but we'll just take what we can to fill our bag up. There we go. So we're at $416,000. And we're not even at the main objective yet. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to run out of here. Head back to the long fin. We'll steal this car. Make it a bit quicker. Make sure we don't alert any guards though. Awesome. Alright, then we're going to come all the way around here. And go right out front where that drainage tunnel is. Alright, we've got a bit of a drive ahead of us. Just enjoy the uh, the boat long fin ASMR sound. Jump out. All right, we're going to want to dive down. Make sure you put your rebreather on. I believe that's going to be G on PC and it should be left on the D-pad for console. Come down here and we're going to cut this gate open. Or the grate, I should say. So here we go. Normally, you have to go back and forth three or four times on every single one. There we go. We're in. All right, let's kick this bad boy down and get in the compound. Open the door, we're in. Okay, now as I said, we're gonna do this completely undetected. If you do get detected, you can just restart it off spawn. We're gonna take this guy out. All right, follow this path. So we're gonna run all the way across here, avoiding these guards' cone of sight. I'm gonna jump up here. Run across to these stairs. Wait for this guard on our left to turn around, which he did. Now, we also need to wait for him to go all the way back in there. Like, like right there until he stops. And then we can take him out. That's important because a juggernaut will walk through that area and spot him if we don't. We can take this guy out as well. Now, that last guard also gave us gate keys. So, I'll show you what they do as well if you are lucky enough to get them. And then for this last guy on the stairs, we do the exact same thing. That was a bit too close. Probably just should have shot him, but that's, that's all right. We did it. Once you're in this room here, go over to the safe at the back. There's a bit of extra cash in here. Okay, we've got about 60,000, that's nice. And then you can go in that door that I just aimed at, but since we have the gate key that we picked up off one of the guards just before, we're actually gonna make sure that the way is clear down here, jump off. Oh, that was actually way too close. That guard almost saw us. But because we have this gate key, we can actually jump down here open this gate and come in this way. That way, instead of hacking three fingerprints, we're only going to have to hack one. Makes it a lot easier. Now, an easy rule of thumb, pun intended, for this one is obviously we know what the first fingerprint is going to look like. And then what we do is we go to the first fingerprint again on the second level and then just go one more to the right. That way it's going to be the second fingerprint. On the third one, we're going to go down to the second fingerprint that was... We just basically copy the one above us and then go one more to the right, if that makes sense. That's the easiest way to do it. I don't really know a better way to explain it than that. But just keep doing that until you get to the bottom of the fingerprint and then you would have done it. Okay, we're in. Now that we're inside, all of this again is completely stealthy because we have the, uh, the actual drill instead of the demolition. 
open this, El Ruby is going to text us the code 450429. 0429 We're in Okay, once we're out, we want to jump back over here Make sure the Juggernaut isn't there to look at us And then we want to run, 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 run we can run right around that guard's cone of vision and get to this door. Now, that guard that's coming towards us, if you don't do that in time, just, just wait for him to walk past you and then he'll turn around again. Just wait until the way is clear and take the exact path that I did. If you have to wait for that guard to go back and forth, that's completely fine. Just be patient. Make sure it works. Don't get spotted. Once we're here... What we have to do is take out this guard by the bike here. Now there is going to be a guard in a car that's going to come through and spot that guy. So we also need to take out this guy that's going to be coming in the car. Just to be safe though, we'll take out this guard as well. And then this guard in the car is going to be coming through any second. There he is on our map. So we're going to jump up here on the left and sort of jump out and shotgun him in the face before he knows what's going on. Uh, All righty. Jump out in front of him. Blast him. Boom, he's dead. All right. And then basically we're done. So we're going to steal his car or you can just use that bike. Drive up here. Then we want to drive right to the end of this sort of peninsula here. Beautiful drive off into the water, jump out, and then we just want to swim as far away from the island as we possibly can. Put your rebreather on again and just keep swimming. Alrighty, once we get far enough away, way out here, yep, there we go, it says Escape Kaiaparigo, that's disappeared from the bottom of the screen, so we're done. Now we're just going to wait for the cutscene to pop up, and we're good to go. Any second, come on, come on Rockstar, hit me with it. There we go. Alrighty, again, I'm not going to try and spoil anything, so we'll skip to the end of this cutscene. And here we go, the end screen for the heist. Actual take 1.55 million, which is, you know, that's, that's really good for about two hours work. Or less than two hours. Anyway, under 15 minutes, 10 minutes 50. Nice, no hacks failed. And full loot bags, which means we did the elite challenge. So we're going to get an extra 50 grand. And there we go, that's our final total. 1.6 million. That's a lot of money for just under two hours work as a really low level player. We're only level 31 right now on this character. So there you have it. The final cutscene is going to play. That is Rags to Riches episode 4 done. Today, we'll be buying one of the top five businesses in GTA Online. And I'll show you how to use it to make over one and a half million dollars in your first two hours with this business. In today's episode of Rags to Riches, we're buying the agency. And of course, the first thing we have to do is buy one. So head over to Dynasty 8 Executive. The cheapest one is going to cost you two million dollars. Now, if you don't have two million dollars yet, I'd assume that's probably because you're not following along with this series. So I'd guide you back to episode one if you don't have the money. So follow this series up until this point and keep running the Kaya Perico heist until you have enough money to buy it. So let's go ahead and get one. We can get the one in Little Seoul. It's the cheapest one. It's in a pretty good location. All of these are really in decent locations anyway, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose. As for these optional upgrades, things like accommodation are nice. That lets you spawn at this location. The armory is going to be 
nice as well along with the vehicle workshop but today we're not going to worry about those two because we're trying to save money after we've gone into the agency we're going to need to wait for franklin and amani to give us our vip contract that's going to make us a million dollars by itself the only problem with doing this is the first time through you're gonna have to wait after every single setup for Franklin and Amani to contact you but after you've completed this once that won't ever happen again. In the meantime though we can head over to our agency computer and we can do some security contracts. These also pay pretty decently. So if we scroll through here we can see there's three different difficulties. There's gonna be specialist, professional and specialist plus. Now professional is the lowest paying one. The specialist and the specialist plus options will give us a bit more money. So right here, liquidized assets is going to pay us the most. That's going to pay us $53,000. So let's quickly start one of these up. And hopefully by the time we finish, we're ready to start up our VIP contract. Alrighty, now we can start up the VIP contract. Let's head over to the golf club, to the big F on our map, and get this started. Damn, Franklin, you're looking dapper. There he is, the man himself, Dr. Dre. His phone's been stolen. We need to go get it back. Shades of The Last of Us 2 here. This is grim. Hey, at least these guys aren't going to be, uh, well, effing with Dre anymore. Dropping down here. We're breaking into the FIB, just like we did in the story mode. Way back in 2013. Here we are 10 years later. Communications room. All right, that's back here. Exactly like we did with Michael way back in the day. And while we wait for Franklin again, we'll do another one of these security contracts. Here we go. Okay, Franklin is going to contact us soon about payphone hits. Now, this is huge. Once he contacts us, every 20 minutes, we can call Franklin and request a payphone hit. That's going to give us $85,000 if we complete it correctly. And we can easily complete these in less than five minutes. Pause. Hang on. As of today, Rockstar has actually patched this and changed the cooldown on payphone hits from 20 minutes to 48 minutes. But still, do them as soon as they come off cooldown, just like I said. So we'll keep that in mind and I'll show you how to do one once Franklin contacts us again. So you're probably wondering, if this only pays you $1 million, how are we going to make over $1.5 million on our first run through? Here's why. As you can see on your screen here, this contract is broken up into three separate acts. The Nightlife Leak, High Society Leak, and the South Central Leak. Now your first time through each of these leaks, you're going to get an additional $100,000. So that right there is $1.3 million. You're also going to get another $100,000 for completing the second last mission for the first time. So you're up to $1.4 million. And then the first time you complete the entire contract, you're going to get $250,000. So that means on your first time through, you'll be getting $1.65 million. And that's not including all the money you're making from these security contracts and payphone hits while you're waiting for Franklin to contact you to start up the next missions. So overall, in total, you're going to actually get around $2 million on your first time through. So we're ready to start up these three leaks. Each of these leaks will have two setup missions and a finale. So I'm going to get stuck into the nightlife leak now, and I'll see you guys at the finale. Where is he? Oh, bang. All right. Now, would Dr. Dre leave this guy alive? <laughs> I feel kind of bad, but then again, I also just killed like 30 security guards to get to him. So what's one more? All right. Act one down. Got our bonus $100,000 for the first time completion. On to the high society league. I'll see you guys at the finale. Never mind, Franklin has just called us telling us we can start up payphone hits. So let's get this started and let's get $85,000. Alrighty, we need to head over to the nearest payphone. Here it is. So for every payphone hit, you're going to get $15,000. And then you'll get an extra $70,000 if you complete it in a special way that Franklin tells you. For this one here, we need to dress up in golfing gear and take out the target with a golf club. So there's a little icon over here on the map that we have to go to to get the golfing equipment. And now we can take her out with a golf club. I'll, I'll let her hit a shot first. You know, I'm not completely inconsiderate okay not a bad shot here we go yep you had that coming apparently gonna leave the area and there we go eighty-five thousand dollars for exactly three minutes of work now that's really really good all right on to the high society league finale oh he wasn't even dead he crawled out of that alive that's tough bro all right i'll be taking your phone Take this back to the agency, and there we go, another $100,000. Let's go to the South Central League.
another one hundred thousand dollars in the bank now we're gonna head inside the agency to the F on our map and we'll start up the mission called Studio Time. Once you get to the end of this one, it depends if you like Dr. Dre or not. You might like or dislike this, but this cutscene that's popping up is about five minutes long and it's unskippable. So I guess just try and sit back and enjoy it. That mission's done. Another $100,000 and now we have to go back and start the finale from our agency and it's called Don't F with Dre. Hey, is that Yo, Dre, Johnny, hold up, man. You took something that belongs to me. Bitch, ass, motherfucker. Now all we have to do is take Dr. Dre to his helicopter and we'll have our $1 million as well as our extra $250,000 for completing this for the first time. And there you go. So at this point, you should have made around $2 million. You've got the $1.65 million for the first time completing the contract. And as long as you're completing those payphone hits on cooldown every 20 minutes by phoning Franklin, you will have no problem in making at least $2 million in this roughly two hours that the contract will take you. So now you've got the two best ways to make money in the entire game if you've been following Rags to Riches to this point. So let's recap. At this point, you'll have the Cayo Perico Heist, which should be able to make you anywhere between $1.3 and $1.6 million every time you do it. While your Cayo Perico Heist is on cooldown, which will be roughly three hours in that time you can complete a contract that'll pay you an additional one million dollars as well as completing security contracts and payphone hits for franklin that will make you eighty-five thousand dollars for just a few minutes work so at this point you should have no problem making well over a million dollars per hour in any given hour on top of this we also have our acid lab that we got way back in episode one that we can sell whenever we like and that's also going to get us a couple hundred thousand dollars in this episode of Rags to Riches, we'll be covering the nightclub. The nightclub is one of the best, but also most complicated businesses in the entire game. First things first, location. With a nightclub, I prefer buying one of the two at the top of the city here in Vinewood. That's because they're closer to the highways that you'll often need to go down in order to complete your cell missions. However, if you don't have the money or you're struggling for money right now, anyone in the city should be fine. As for your upgrades, all of these are completely cosmetic except for two, storage space and garage space. The garage will obviously give you places to store your vehicles, and the storage will allow your nightclub warehouse to hold more product before you have to sell it. This is something I would recommend getting eventually, but not right now when you're just starting out. So let's head over there now and do our three setup missions. We'll set up our staff first. Our bartender's over on the beach. All right, get in, you're coming with me. Sweet, you know Onto the equipment setup, I will be taking this bus, thank you very much. Stealing these speakers as well, because, you know, apparently we can't buy these legally. Now we've got to get our DJ and ask me if I'm surprised that his plane is crashing. The, the, the answer's no. Alright, here we go, back and we're fully set up. Now let's get to making some money. So first things first, how does the nightclub actually work? Well, to put it simply, there's two different ways to make money. Through the actual nightclub itself, and then through the warehouse that's underneath the nightclub that definitely is not at all legal. For the actual nightclub, how we're going to make money is through the safe in your office. Every in-game day, which is 48 minutes of playtime, more money is going to be added to your nightclub safe. How much money you make depends on how high your popularity bar is for your nightclub. So of course, we want to try and keep it full. If your popularity bar is full, you will make $50,000 every 48 minutes, which is pretty good. So there's three ways to do that. The first and most likely easiest way to do this is by kicking out troublemakers or delivering VIPs back to their homes. In order to do this, this is actually a random event that can occur within your nightclub. When this event occurs, your lead security guard, Marcel, will give you a text letting you know that you can do it. And you'll also see a blue dot on your minimap when you're in your nightclub. Walk over to that blue dot and deal with that person and it'll increase your popularity. The next way to do this is by completing popularity missions from your office in your computer. Starting this up will set you out on a mission that's very, very easy to complete. And again, that will fill up your popularity bar a bit. But maybe the most effective way, even though it is the most expensive, is to change DJs in your nightclub. 
So to do this, go over to your computer. You'll see the resident DJ tab and there's four different DJs to choose from. You can book a new DJ for $100,000 and that will fully resupply that popularity bar. It'll fill it all the way up. However, once you already book a DJ, it will only cost $10,000 to rebook them again. If you rebook a DJ instead of booking a new DJ, that's gonna fill up your popularity bar one tenth of the way. So if you wanna use this method and increase your popularity very quickly, you can just rebook DJs back and forth, rotate between them until your popularity bar is full. It will cost you a bit of money, but the profits will outweigh the expenses. The next way we're gonna make money with the nightclub is the underground warehouse. And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, so stick with me here. What we're gonna be doing today in this Rags to Riches episode is getting all five warehouse technicians in this warehouse tab. They're all gonna cost one, two, three hundred thousand dollars to hire, but once you hire them, you never actually have to pay them again. You can assign these technicians to go out and get you a different type of goods. And as you can see here, there's seven different goods to choose from. So of course, we wanna choose the five that are gonna make us the most money. So what are they? Well, in terms of profit per hour, the five best are South American imports, pharmaceutical research, cash creation, cargo and shipments, and sporting goods. But as you can see, all of those are actually locked. So why are they locked? Obviously, because we don't have the ability to accrue these goods yet, but what does that actually mean? How do we gain the ability to do that? Well, to gain the ability to get those goods, you actually have to own the business that those goods stem from. If that's confusing, I'll try and explain it here. Cargo and shipments. In order to get cargo and shipments, you need to own either a crate warehouse or a hangar. Sporting goods. In able to get sporting goods, you need to own a bunker. The other five correspond to all of the NC businesses in the game. So South American Imports is for your Coke, Pharmaceutical Research is for your lab, Organic Produce is for the grass farm, Printing and Copying is the Doc Forgery office, and Cash Creation is the Counterfeit Cash Factory. So if you haven't already guessed it, for the rest of this episode, what we'll be doing is buying the five businesses that are the best for your nightclub. So we're gonna buy the bunker, we're gonna buy a coke lockup, a lab, and a cash factory, and then we have the choice of either buying a crate warehouse and a CEO office, or a hangar. Either of them will do the job. But I kinda just spent all of my money buying this nightclub, so I'm gonna hit another Kaya Burrito heist, and then we'll go and buy the bunker. Alrighty, now that we've got the money which bunker should we actually buy? Basically, the further north, the cheaper the bunker will be, but that's not actually good because when you complete your bunker sale missions, you want it to be as close to the city as possible so you don't have to drive far. And for that reason, the best bang for your buck is probably the one over here on the left, the two match bunker. It's very close to the city and it's also pretty affordable compared to other ones around the Sandy Shores area. So let's go over here and set this one up. All right, this one's fully set up now. Now there's a few things we need to do. The first thing is we wanna go to our manage staff tab on the computer here and we wanna assign all of our staff to manufacturing. You can see there's three options here assigned to manufacturing, research, or both. Manufacturing means they're only going to be making products that you can sell, which will give you the most money. Assigning them to research means your research bar will fill up. Every time that research bar fills up, you'll unlock a new item that you will still have to buy, but you'll unlock them. These are things like Mark II weapons, different ammo types for those weapons, different camos and weapons for certain vehicles as well. Things that are gonna be useful for veteran players, but in this instance, we're worried about making money, so we're gonna assign staff to manufacturing. Moving down to the upgrades tab, we've got a staff and equipment upgrade as well as a security upgrade. What I'm gonna say here is the same for every business that we'll go over for the rest of this video. The staff and equipment upgrades are definitely upgrades you will want to buy at some point in the near future. This is going to increase your profits from this business by at least double. And I'm really not gonna try and overload you with too much information in this video. So if you wanna know the exact profits for this business or any other business that I've spoken about in this video, I'll leave a link in the description below to all of those other guides. Now that we have an 
operational bunker, all we need to do is keep that supplies bar full. There's two ways to do that, either by buying or stealing supplies at your computer. That's going to cost you $75,000 if that supply bar is completely empty. I only recommend doing this if you have the staff and equipment upgrades for this business or else you're actually going to lose money. You can also choose to steal supplies, which will put you out on a mission where you go grab supplies and bring them back to the bunker. That's free. But it is going to take a pretty long time to fully resupply the business. All of the staff in your bunker will use these supplies and create product passively over the time you spend in GTA Online. So every once in a while, come back and you can start a sell mission and sell all of the product in your bunker. If you're doing this solo, I would recommend selling before the bar gets over a quarter of the way full. That's because if the bar goes over about a quarter of the way full, it's going to give you over one sell vehicle. It'll give you two or three vehicles that you'll have to sell. And unfortunately, if if you're doing that solo, you won't actually be able to sell all of the product within the time limit, which means you're missing out on a lot of money. Okay, now that we've got an operational bunker, we can go back to our nightclub and we can assign one of the staff members to sporting goods. From here, we just basically rinse and repeat that process over and over again. So what we're going to do next is we're going to buy three MC businesses that correspond to the three best nightclub MC business products. As I said earlier, those are cash creation, South American imports, and pharmaceutical research. So we're going to buy a coke lockup, a lab, and a counterfeit cash factory. To do this, head into May's bank for closures, and we first need to buy an MC clubhouse. The cheapest one is the Great Chaparral Clubhouse for $200,000. That's really all you need. If you've got a lot of money, you can buy one in a better location, but this one will do just fine. So let's head over there and buy these MC businesses. Once you're in your MC clubhouse, walk over to the computer and this will give you access to the five MC businesses. Now, of course, this is going to take you a while to get the money to buy all of these businesses. So I had to do a couple of Kaya Perico heists to make this happen. But over the course of about a day, I ended up buying all of those three businesses and setting them up. With all of the MC businesses, the cheapest ones are actually in pretty good locations. So there's no need to go spending a lot of money on getting more expensive MC businesses. The cheapest ones are actually very, very good. Once that's done, head back to your nightclub, hire three more technicians and assign them to those three products. Again, just like the bunker, I would recommend trying to buy the staff and equipment upgrades for all of those MC businesses eventually. But right now we're just trying to set up the nightclub. Then the final business we need to get for our nightclub is cargo and shipment. So we have two options here. We can either buy a crate warehouse, which we first have to buy a CEO office to do, or you can buy a hangar. Now, this is completely up to you. Both of them are about the same in terms of money made. Personally, I chose to buy a hangar simply because it gives you a place to store your aircraft. But this one is going to be completely personal preference. As for which hangar you should buy, the one at LSIA is the cheapest and that one will do just fine. But eventually, once you get a lot more money, you might want to switch and buy one of the ones in Ford Zancudo. And there we have it. Now we have a fully operational nightclub. The only thing left to do for the nightclub is to buy the staff, equipment, and security upgrades. Just like with all of the other businesses, this is definitely worth it in the long run. This will make you a lot more money than you would otherwise. So keep running those Kaya Perico heists and Dr. Dre contracts until you can afford them. So there you have it. That's a fully operational nightclub, and this is the second last episode of Rags to Riches. We've only got one more episode to go, so in next episode, we'll be buying the Oppressor Mark II. Welcome to the finale of Rags to Riches. Across this series, I've shown you how to go from level one up to where we are now with millions of dollars and nine businesses. So you may be thinking, what else is there left to do? Well, there's one thing. Today, I'll be showing you how to correct buy one of the best vehicles in all of Grand Theft Auto Online, the Oppressor Mark II. Recently, Rockstar Games has increased the price of this one from $3 million all the way up to $8 million, but there's a way to get it for $2 million cheaper. So I'm going to show you how to do it today, and then your character, along with my character, will have everything they need to make millions and millions of dollars for the rest of time. So let's jump straight in. Here we are on Warstock. The Oppressor Mark II is a million dollars but you can see the trade price is six million dollars but it's a little bit confusing on how to get it 
As we can see here, we know we need to complete five client drops to get this discount, but how do we actually start those up? The game doesn't really explain it too well. Well, last episode, we bought the nightclub. That's step one. If you don't have a nightclub yet, watch this series. I explain how to get every business and which order to buy them in. And once you buy the nightclub, you have the ability to buy another vehicle called the Terabyte. You can see that one here in Warstock for 1.375 million. Now, not only is this gonna get us a discount on the Oppressor Mark II, but it's also a really good way to make money on its own. So this is a vehicle that you'll want to buy anyway, but buying it now gives us that $2 million discount on the Oppressor Mark II. So let's click here and buy this one, and then this one is actually going to get delivered to the Terabyte Garage in our nightclub. There's a specific garage for this vehicle. If you don't want to go to your nightclub, you can also request it through your interaction menu by going to Services, Terabyte, and Request it terabyte if you do that it'll spawn nearby all right once we're inside we have to watch this little cinematic here okay now that we're back here there's a few things first is over here there's a little vehicle workshop spot this is actually the only location you can customize the oppressor mark ii and in order to get this you'll actually need to buy it on the screen where you purchase the terabyte it's a specific option that says vehicle workshop so if you haven't already noticed yeah you will literally need this vehicle in order to customize the oppressor mark ii so you need to buy it from here we need to start up client jobs to do that we're going to head over to the touch screen in the middle here and on the top left that's where we can start our client jobs from now unfortunately we don't have access to most of these if you want access to the rest of these missions you're gonna have to buy the drone station upgrade for your terabyte in the long run this might be worth it the diamond shopping mission is very very quick only about three minutes and it'll get you thirty thousand dollars but for now we can just do the data sweep and the robbery and progress missions because they both pay the same amount of money and they're only going to take us about three to five minutes so let's start up this robbery in progress so these robbery in progresses are pretty simple we just have to scroll through the cameras and see which bank on the map is actually getting robbed okay it's the one at route 68 out in sandy shores can do let's have a look at the interior camera all right there's the robber okay we're gonna head out there i'm gonna call in my sparrow and we'll head out there now all right we're launching these rockets in there's also gonna be a juggernaut on the inside we'll see if we can take him out with with the sparrow we'll have to get low to the ground Oh, I almost just got cleaned up by a car. I gotta reload. Watch the back. This has actually been quite an eventful, simple mission. All right, but we should be able to call Lester, lose these cops, and then we just need to head to the destination. And that's it. That's a robbery in progress. They're very, very simple. Why, hello. How you doing? Yeah, remove one from the Easy. Oh. No problem. I'll get him off your back. All right, see you at the destination. There we go, $31,000. So we do that four more times. Well, we'll do a data sweep now, and then we'll we'll switch back and do robbery in progress. We're going to have a bit of a cooldown, though, so that, that kind of sucks. Now, with these data sweep ones, we need to go around and scan or hack these target vehicles. Hopefully, this is the one here. I just scanned another one, and that, that wasn't it, unfortunately. Okay, that's the one. Good. Let's hop out here, take these guys out. This one again, a very, very simple mission. Jump down here. Ow. Oh, okay. So pretty simple. Just steal the vehicle, drive it to the location, and we're going to get our 31k. All right. See you guys. I'm, I'm out of here. Lester, help me, brother. There's too many of them, Lester. All right, we're good. And then this should be our last one. I'll need to hit another Kaya Borigo heist to get that $6 million. And then we're good to go. Let me just yoink these bearer bonds real quick. Thank you, Mr. Rubio. And here we are, the Oppressor Mark II. And like I said at the start of the video, we are going to want to buy this specialized vehicle workshop. Not only will it store the Oppressor Mark II, but it will let you customize it and put missiles on it, which I'm sure pretty much all of us are going to want. So we'll buy this Oppressor Mark II. Boom. All right, it's going to arrive in our terabyte in a second. So let's call it in, head over there and wait for it. Oh, it's already been delivered now. Easy. Let's, 
Let's just go in here, request it from a terabyte. And it should spawn nearby. There it is. And there we go. We have the eight million, now six million dollar super bike. Gonna need to put the missiles on it. But what you can actually do is fly it down here into your terabyte, just like that. So you go to the back right of the terabyte and it just stores it inside. It's pretty neat. So if you want to put missiles on it, which I would probably recommend doing, it's going to be $180,000. I don't have the money for that right now. Lamau, oh well. And there you go. You've got the bike. We have, what is it, nine businesses now, I believe. This series has been a massive success. I hope it helped you out. At this point, you should have everything you could possibly ever want to make money in GTA Online. If you do want to go down the route of getting additional businesses, you know, buying every single property in the game, absolutely go do it. Just run your Kaya Pericos, your agencies, and go ahead and buy things like the auto shop. It's a great business. Crate warehouse, maybe vehicle warehouse, penthouse, whatnot. Lots of more things you can buy. But if we're talking about strictly the best ways to make money, at this point in the series, you've got all of them. So, again, if you enjoyed, if it helped, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more stuff like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Poise!